So we are a family of five now living in a less than 1,000 square foot home. And I did my research and the average square foot of a house in America is 2,480 square foot in 2022 and it is 2023. So imagine that my home less than 1,000 square foot in the living area space that we live in as a family of five and most American families live in more than double that. So I wanna share a few tips and tricks that I learned along the way of living in a small house with a larger family. So we are a recent family of five. I just had this little guy about two months ago, a little less than two months ago, and I know many of you enjoy the small home living content, we have a nice space outdoors that we have, but our home is not large. And so I just wanna share with you what I have learned along the way of living in this home for more than six years and why I think you can, honestly. So first of all, these are not in any particular order. I am not um, telling you, you need to sell your large home and go live in a small house because you can do what fits best for your family but I would say it is very practical to live in a smaller home. So first of all, you keep the rooms minimal. That includes furniture, decor, items on the floor, just everything to be honest. So keep things not large, keep them minimal. Don't crowd your space. You have to maximize your valuable real estate that you have in your home. Secondly, share a bedroom. We live in a two bedroom home, our master bedroom and our girls' room. Master bedroom is his nursery as well and the girls share room. Um, when he's a little bit older, it'll be all three kids in one room and my husband and I get the other room. They are the same size of room, probably like a 12 by 14 square foot space, not large with small shared closet space. So sharing rooms helps you uh, figure out how to keep less as well and you just again have to maximize that valuable real estate that you have putting a twin bed in with a crib putting a full-size bed with a crib you just make it work with the space that you have and then it actually helps you with the next tip of keep on decluttering so this is probably to me the most important when you bring something in take something out Regular decluttering, decluttering, even in a large home, is super important that we don't just keep collecting stuff and things that you don't seem to need or that you forget about even. So decluttering in a small home is very important and very key to living in a small space. If you have a chair that you had decided you thought you might need, that you found at a thrift store and you bought it but you never DIY'd it, you never did anything with it, Redonate it, put it on the curb is free. The money that you spent is wasted after you've, you after you've bought the item. Anyways, if you're not even going to invest in that item that you have, or kitchen cabinets and cupboard storage space, for instance, if you buy an appliance or you're gifted something that um, you thought you would use and you haven't used it in quite a while, and you just don't see yourself ever using it sell it on marketplace gift it um, donate it something so that you get something back out of that space again i'm going to keep saying this maximize your real estate space have less clothing this is kind of going with the decluttering but when you share a space when you have small closet space you don't need as much clothing and you can't fit as much clothing in there. So I like to kind of follow the capsule wardrobe. I don't do the 10 item, no way. I like my thrifting too much and have a little more variety. But I wear the same five to 10 outfits probably every week or two. And so that just really helps in my girls. I've minimized what I have in their closets so that they have less to choose from also. And that way there's just more space in their closets to store toys and pillows and blankets and things like that instead of all clothing. Maximize your storage space. So if you have under bed space, put some vacuum sealed bags under there of your off season clothes or put toys under beds, under couches. We have little bins of toys under some of the furniture 
and we may get those little Sterilite containers and stack them in their closet of some toys they have so that it just maximizes that vertical space too instead of just all horizontal laid out. And using um, picnic baskets as decor, as storage as well. These are things I've touched on before in other small home living videos too that I can put in the description box for you. But just making sure you use your space wisely put your dresser as your nightstand next to your bed that's what we have um make sure you just use what space you have very wisely very um just functional i think also another tip this one kind of doesn't go with the stuff but let lots of light in i love our big windows um having the curtains and blinds open regularly i don't even have blinds or curtains out in our living space because i feel like it just makes the space bigger and i love our window treatment anyways so just making sure i use the light to keep the space feeling larger and bigger have less large furniture in your home we do have a few two bigger pieces in our living space here but then our other side Furniture are smaller pieces of chairs that are still comfortable, thrifted of course, but that are not super large and that don't feel like they um, take up space where you can't even walk and where it just looks overcrowded. So I think having smaller furniture, less furniture, is just really important to living in a small space. So I got the baby and laid down, so I am back here for a, one more important tip is to let grandparents, relatives, friends know when it's birthday time for kids to gift experiences, gift money, or gift practical items like clothing and shoes, um, small things that they will need and use. And experiences are wonderful when you have kids. That way you don't get more stuff and toys in your house. This is something I really value and appreciate that my family, my husband's family have agreed upon. So we ask for a lot of experiences and practical gifts. And also getting kids along the ride with redonating, re-gifting toys and things they have been given. So that is just really important to get the family and the kids along with all of this. So again, living in a small home is, it can be tricky at some times because you're always on top of each other. Um, you get to know your family a lot better, which also can be super beneficial. There's so many benefits to living in a small home. Less expenses, less stuff to keep, less things to get rid of if you ever move, um, getting to know people better, um, just being more practical and frugal in your living. There's just so many things that I love about living in our small, less than 1,000 square foot home as a family of five. And uh, if you do want to see a tour of our home, let me know. We've been doing some updates here and there. Summertime is not a good time for me to do a lot inside as it's gardening season. I'm outside a lot with my gardens and with my kiddos and taking care of this little guy. But I hope you feel like you got some tips on living in a small home. If you are living in a small home or if you think you need a downsize, here's just some tips that I have for you that hopefully are helpful. Anyways, leave some tips in the comments below. Like I said, I've shared like benefits of living in a small home, why I love living in a small home, all those things. Um, and so just let me know if you have any more tips and tricks. There's other ones that I'm sure my mind is just not thinking about or that I didn't create on my list. So I'm sure you can add those on as well in the comments and read those comments. But I hope you are having a blessed and wonderful day and I will be talking with you in my next video. Thank you.